Five o'clock on a Wednesday, and it's time for Craig and Ryan's Magic Review Show. I'm Craig. I'm Ryan. And welcome back to Craig and Ryan's Review Show right here on Magic TV. Absolutely. Um, yeah, we got another review show. We got five tricks this week. We're not going to keep doing five tricks every week, but we've been doing five recently. I think that's our new thing. Let's go up to six. No, 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 no. Let's go up to six. Definitely not our new thing. Um, I don't know. We just see stuff and we're like, oh, let's do that one as well. So we just kind of throw in a yeah. fifth. Uh, but this is a Ryland review show special because we no, perform every well we perform every trick we do, and and this week, like you're doing four of them and I'm doing one. I I, I got a little bit lazy. He's doing all of them <laughs> just because every trick he was like, I wouldn't do that one. I wouldn't do that oh, one. Oh yeah, and you're doing the easy one as well. <laughs> I'm doing the very easy one. But we're going to start off with one of Ryland's tricks. We're going to be talking about uh, uh, a trick that everyone has been discussing recently, and we've yeah. talked about it a few times on this channel as well. Yes. And that's Diamond Cutter by Penguin yeah. and Amanda Nepo. Let's have a look at that right now. So like I said, first up, we've got Diamond Cutter by Amanda Nepo. Yeah. And uh, Diamond Cutter has recently just come out through Penguin Magic. There's been a bit of controversy about various different things. You can go check out those videos from a couple of weeks ago. We're not going to talk about the controversy at all. No. We're just going to talk about the trick and what we think of it. Yeah. Now, if you haven't seen Diamond Cutter, I'm going to get Ryan to do a full performance first of all. After the performance, um, then at that point, we'll talk about what we think. So if you haven't seen Diamond Cutter, Diamond Cutter, that's a, that's, a, that's a golf thing, I think. If you haven't seen Diamond Cutter, let's have a look at that now. Okay, so I'm here with my mom. She's behind the camera, and I'm going to show her a card trick. I bet she's sick to death of them. <laughs> so I've got a card trick. So I've got a pack of cards. Mom, I just wanted to say stop. Stop. There. Yeah. So you're going to take that card, remember it, don't forget it. Yeah. You've got it. that card, we're going to put it there. I'm going to put it, do you know what? We're actually going to put it inside the pack. Okay. There. So I'm not cheating. Now, you know those magicians that snap their fingers and make um, the, your card appear on the top of the pack? Yes. I'm going to try to do that. Watch. Okay. Snap. Was that your card? The five of diamonds? No. Was that close? Uh, yeah, close. What was your card? It was the three of diamonds. The three of diamonds. So, is that better? Yeah. Well, it's got three. It still says five there, but it's got three, yeah. Oh, okay. Well, if you wanted to say three... I can just rub like that. I can do that. You can see that it now says the three. <laughs> no way. Diamonds. And you can also see they also match as well. It is a perfect match. You can examine everything. So, Ryan, that was an amazing performance. Thank it you. really was. Now, you sat there and watched the whole tutorial, and uh, you, you've been doing this. You've actually taken this out and performed it. Yeah. Um, so first of all, you can tell me, um, how easy was it? Because you were sitting there with the tutorial. Yeah. Obviously, there's a little bit of arts and crafts, isn't there? There's a little bit of stuff yeah, that you need to do. Yeah, arts and crafts is... It didn't take yeah, you long. It's a bit hard. It's not hard. Like, yeah, you've got to use the scissors and like, line it up like perfectly. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Or it's not going to look... Well, good. now you've, you've, you've started making these gimmicks for yourself. You yeah, can make one now like... in about... You can make one now in about, what? How long does it take you to make one gimmick card? Like 30 seconds, a minute? Oh, I don't know, about, uh, yeah, 30 seconds. About 30 seconds or a minute, yeah? Yeah. 30 seconds, something like that. Cool. So you can literally, and you get enough in the package to do like, I think, 25 or 30 performances. So you can do this over yeah. and over and over again. You can prepare them, you know, just before you go to a gig, prepare like five or six of them, go into, go into a thing. It's one gimmick card that you add to a regular deck. Yeah. Isn't that right? So you could have like a few cards in a wallet or something, or the packet trick wallet. Yeah, one... I saw it on Instagram and it fooled me. I'm like, how does that work? Yeah, you got completely fooled, didn't yeah. you? Yeah. And it is really nice. I mean, I, I love that. It's based on a classic gag, you know, and I've talked about this before. There's a few people that have explored this plot. Um, but that gag is a classic gag where you where somebody picks a three, of, uh, you know, a three, for example, and you go, hey, is that your card? No. OK, don't worry. What is your card? A three. I can fix it. Rip. <laughs> Look, there you go. It's a funny moment. And I think, you know, sometimes as magicians, we forget that the most important part is the entertainment and presentation. Yeah, yeah. People love that. That's a funny bit. Yeah. But then what it allows you to do is very cleanly show that half of the card at that point. Very, very cleanly. Yeah. And then what it allows you to do is just rub the corner like that and have it change. Yeah. And 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 the display that you use when it's when it's changed is really nice because the second it changes, you can show both hands empty, can't you? Yeah. 
yeah, if you want, you, well, not both hands empty at the same time, but you can go like that hand. Yeah, that's what I mean. You can do this. So you can rub it and you can go, look, boom, boom, boom. Look, it's changed. And then Which is can, what I did to you. Yeah. yeah. And then you can give it out. Yeah. And, uh, and, and, and you're done. Uh, and and they get to keep that as a souvenir, yeah, they and, can. The, yeah. and and you know it's a, it's. There's no point keeping it because it's ripped. So you're not yeah. going to make another gimmick out of that. No. Um, now penguin are selling refill packs, and yes. uh, you can get lots and lots and lots. You've already said you want refill packs. <laughs> um, like yeah. Ryland's planning on doing this. It, it, the, the the card revelation I've seen you do the most is that tic tac trick with the seven of diamonds. Do you remember? Yeah, you know, yeah, yeah. You do that an awful lot. Is this yeah. better than that trick or not as good? Yeah. Right. Yeah, I really like it. You really like it? Yeah, maybe get two people to pick a card. You get somebody to no, pick a... No, three. Okay, where's your other... The, um, the King of Hearts with, <laughs> with the big hanky. Yeah. Oh, and the Six of Spades. Oh my gosh. You've got and the Six of Spades. You've got so many card revelations at the moment, it's ridiculous. <laughs> uh, but yeah, yeah, I mean, the, the, the point is, this is just a really nice close-up trick. And what's really good about it... I'm going to find your card in four different ways. <laughs> Find your four cards in four different ways. Ryland's going to come up with 52 card revelations and just get every <laughs> single card in the deck name. Right. What's what's cool What's cool about this, by the way, is it's... And you, you don't... Not every close-up trick that comes out is like this. It's, it's a stand-up trick. So what I mean by that is if you're performing to a big group of people, you're performing to a big table, having the ability to go, but you know, have the magic happen up here and laser focus them on that half of the card. So you go, look... You know, there you go. They, it's, it's your three of, it's your three, of, uh, you know, it's your three of diamonds. Oh, you don't look too impressed. Well, the five is still there. Everything's happening up here, which is great when you're performing to yeah. a big table. And it also means that your face is in full view as well. So from a marketing yeah. point of view, that's really good, uh, rather than happening down here. Um, but yeah, I mean, the tutorial's well done. Yeah. Um, you get the, the gimmicks are well made because you know, especially printed cards, and then the other stuff that you need to actually gimmick those cards up. Um, yeah. Everything. Amanda's a very good teacher. She she goes through everything yeah. very very clearly. Um, yeah, it's just really good. I, I, there's nothing negative to say about it. You can you can come up with variations of this if you wanted to. This would be maybe a nice trick to do as part of a multiple selection. So if you're having like ten people pick cards, like I do sometimes on stage, having that moment where you change the one into the other is really good. I really like that. Um, you also, it's worth noting, you also get more gimmicks than you do uh, gaffed cards. You only get about 25, 30 gaffed cards, but you get enough gimmicks to make like... Yeah. So creative people out there, once you understand the technique that Amanda's using to change the pip, and by the way, that is very original. I think that it has applications outside of this routine. Yeah. I think there's a lot of other things you can do with that. But, you know, I think creative people could take that concept and do something with it with a regular deck of cards. Like, I'm not too sure what, but I think that there's, there's stuff you could do once you understand that principle. And I think that's probably why Amanda's giving you more cards than you actually need. So there you go. It's um, nothing else to say. You're definitely going to do it. I've been yeah. doing it. You're definitely going to carry on doing it. I have you? Yeah, once. Cool. Yeah, once <laughs> or twice. Never knew. Um, there you go. Well, you don't come to every gig with me. <laughs> Oh, <laughs> uh, did you do it yesterday? I did it yesterday, yeah. Oh, not to win. <laughs> um, but anyway, it's um, it's really good. I would give it 95%. What about you? 100. 100%. Yeah. 95% from me, 100% from Ryan. It's going straight into his working set. Yep. It's really great. Um, yep. Congratulations, Penguin Magic. Congratulations, yep. Amanda Nepo. Really great trick. Now let's move on to another really great trick. Yeah. So next up, we have Name Cup by Jota and Juan Pablo. Um, and, uh, you know, we, we like Jota's stuff. We didn't like that effing card. We didn't think that was any yeah. good. But most of Jota's stuff we really like. And um, i got to be honest, this is, this is another hit. I think this is another really great trick from Jota. Now, if you haven't seen Name Cup, um, Ryland's going to do a performance of it. But the key thing about this is it's very, very adaptable. And you'll see what I mean when we start talking about that. But let's have a, let's look at a performance of Name Cup first of all. So this is uh, a performance of Name Cup by Jota Juan Pablo. Okay, so I've just came back from breakfast at McDonald's. Now when I walked into McDonald's, I thought I was actually at Starbucks because the thing is they wrote my name on the cup, which I thought was actually really weird. <laughs> but we'll get back to the cup in a minute. We have a pack of cards. So I'm just gonna mix the cards up like this. 
And I'm going to get my dad to say stop and I'm going to get my mom to say stop. So dad say stop. Stop. There. Yeah. She's got that card and mom say stop. Stop. And that card. Okay, so dad, that's your card. Got it. Mom, that's your card. Okay. So you're going to put the cards back onto the top of the pack and cut them into my like that. So I don't know where they are. Now, as I said, I went to McDonald's and I actually brought uh, the cup home with me. So I thought it was really weird. Now I'm going to try and do some magic with this cup. Watch. Because now you can actually see that it now says the king of hearts. Right. That was my card. How cool is that? That's very cool. That's very cool. Look. But the thing is, we need mommy's card, so I'm just going to do this. I'm just going to rub it like this. You can see that it's now the six of spades. Dude! But the thing is, you should have seen your face. Your face was like this. <laughs> your face was like... That's was your face. I'm not kidding. Okay, another good performance. You're on fire today, aren't you, mate? You're on <laughs> yeah. fire. Um, and it's fair to say that you haven't actually gigged this yet. You haven't actually... Um... I don't think I've actually used any of these, to be honest. No, you did, didn't you do Amanda's? You've done oh, yeah, Amanda's. I did Amanda's, yeah. Yeah, but I don't think you've done any of the others. Um, but, uh, yeah, anyway, name club. You've not actually gigged this yet, and he's only learnt it, like, this morning, like, a couple of hours ago. Oh, yeah. Um, that should tell you kind of how easy it is. Uh, it isn't very difficult to do. The tutorial is very well shot. To, uh, everything's really well explained. It's broken down into various different videos, yeah. uh, which is really good. And, and what you just saw is, is the way that Ryland's chosen to do it. Uh, because what you get is you get a cup that in essence allows you to have four revelations. Yeah. So you could have the way that Ryland did it, which is the way that it was on the tutorial, which is his name changing into a card, then another card, then a shot face. Yeah. However, if you don't want to do it that way, that's absolutely fine. So let's say that you were using digital force bag or a Sven pad and you wanted to force, for example, um, a color, or you wanted to force a country, or you wanted whatever you wanted to force. Basically, it's a way of revealing four times anything that you want to force. Yeah. That's, that's worth pointing out. So, yeah, you can, you can use playing cards. Joe to go through some ideas on the download, but when you think about all the different ways that you can actually force something, the possibilities on this become, you know, really, really big. I mean, there's so much that you can yeah. actually do. Um, in terms of the actual trick itself, um, it's it's very well made. The cup is very well made. It'll last a long time. You notice that Ryan had a McDonald's cup. You actually get labels in there for you McDonald's. You get Starbucks, McDonald's, and Burger King. So you can set it up however you wanted to. You decided to do McDonald's, and McDonald's. I then pointed out to you they don't write the name on McDonald's, and you were like, "Okay, I can cover that with a patter line," um, which is which you did, which is fine. Um, so I mean, that's all it is. It is actually really easy to do, isn't it? I mean, you you've performed it. You learned it. Is it easy? Yeah? Ish. Ish. Go on, give me the ish. What's what's the ish? It's just, um... Can be how, a bit fiddly. How, yeah. Can be a bit fiddly. How, how, it, how it works. How well, there's lots of different how ways. It, how, how you make it change. Is it reliable, though? I mean, you've only been practicing it for a couple of hours. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, it's reliable? Yeah. Yeah? I think. You th what do you mean, you think? I think. I you think? think? Yeah, I think it is. Yeah? yeah? I mean, when you first started doing it, you weren't doing it perfect, were you? No. And, but But then after a bit of practice... You got it to how you saw it in the performance there. Yeah. Um, one thing is, both me and Ryland found it difficult to do the shake change. There's a change that they actually do, uh, Jota does, where that you visibly see it change. At the end, at the beginning. At the end and at the beginning. And I really struggled with that. You struggled with that as yeah. well, didn't you? Yeah. But what's nice is there's a lot of different options. So you saw in Ryland's performance, he didn't actually shake it. He turned it round and snapped and then he... He rubbed it like that and then he blew, you know, that, that's that's yeah. another option that you can do. So you can change it and adapt it accordingly. So that's what I mean about it being yeah, adaptable. Yeah, so there is actually uh, three reveals, but you can make it four. We've done three. Yes, we have. But we can do four. Can you? Okay, no, no that's I'll fine. I'll, I'll, I'll take your you you word for it. Take your word for it. So, but you've got the name on the, the first one, so because that makes yeah. sense, right? And yeah, then you would got, have your name. <laughs> and then you've got the various different reveals. Um... Yeah, I think the, the only negative I'm going to say about this is where you'd want to use it. And what I mean by that is it's probably a bit too big to carry around uh, in a close-up gig. Yeah. Uh, you wouldn't want to kind of do it in a close-up performance where you kind of um, 
maybe going to tables or definitely not mix and mingle because you've got nowhere to put the cup but also when you're doing table magic you know like just putting it down there it look a bit random to walk over to a table in a restaurant or a table in a wedding and go yeah I'm just gonna put my coffee down there stage. And, but also with stage I mean it could it would work on stage don't get me wrong but it's also quite small the revelation is quite small so if you think of somewhere like you know when you're at the magic circle theater for example you try and do that on stage, nobody would see what you're doing. It, it wouldn't show up as an actual revelation. It's it's small, which means it wouldn't play to a yeah, big I think audience. Yeah, it would only work at like the House of Secrets. A parlor show as well would yeah, work. Yeah, you know, like like I, I'm I'm doing a parlor show in um, next Saturday, aren't I? Yeah. A parlor show would work. Would you do this? Would I do it? Well, I've got a parlor show that's worked out to the nth degree. But you know what? I'd probably give it a go. Yeah. I'd I think, probably I think give we it a go. Maybe show me Okay, well, I could get it filmed. I could do it there. That's absolutely yeah, fine. Yeah. The nice thing about the um, about doing it in a parlour show is I can I can justifiably put a coffee cup down on the table because with a parlour show it's kind of more of a formal setting. So I could do card under uh, card under uh, glass, for, uh, card under glass, but with that cup, for example. <laughs> so I could keep having the card go underneath the cup, and then I could have the other two cups, and I could even have, turn that into a multiple selection because I do do multiple selection in parlour. So I could even turn that into a multiple selection. So I say to somebody. Was that your card? No, look, watch my name. Boom, it changes. So, yeah, I'd probably, I'd probably put it into a parlour show. Um, the cup's not examinable afterwards, but no. um, it's not really too much of an issue, to be perfectly honest, because people aren't really... If you do it in a parlour show, nobody would want to look at the cup anyway. If you're doing it on a small stage like the House of Secrets, it'd be fine. But that's just another reason not to do it in a close-up situation. But I don't... It would be fine. There's no angle. I don't want people to think it's angly or anything. It's not angly. No. There's not a problem for it. Doing it close-up, it's just a bulky thing to carry around that can't be examined at the end. And, and realistically, if you're doing it close-up, because the picture is changing, I think people might want to look at it and they're not going to be able to. Yeah. So I think it's best for parlour, small stage. And also, Instagram, after we finished this filming of the review show, you said you wanted to film that for Instagram, didn't you? I mean, yeah. it's perfect for Instagram. Yeah. It's absolutely perfect. Um, so, yeah, I, I'm, I like it. I'm going to give it 85%. Uh, d d d I, I've got a place where I think I can put it into my parlour shot, and I think it would be a nice little addition. So I'm going to give it 85%. I don't think you're going to do it, but you tell me. No, I don't think I will. I'm going to give it 79. But you'll do it on Insta? Yeah. Okay, but not in the real world. Yeah. So 79% from Ryland, 85% from me. It's a good trick. It's really good. It's just got to be, you got to have the right place and the right time to be able to do it. If you find that right place and the right time, it's golden. Okay, so trick number three today. We've got Brainstormer by Mark Leverage, and it's been bought out by Big Blind Media. Yeah. Now, i got to tell you right now, I love Brainstormer. Uh, I used to do this about 15 years ago. Mark Leverage actually released this as a physical product about 15 years ago when Mark Leverage Mag Magic did physical products. And I remember interviewing him on Magic TV a little while ago and saying to him one of my favourite tricks was Brainstormer. And he actually said to me there, it's going to be coming out again at some point through Big Blind Media. Well, here we are. It's now then. This is one of my favourite tricks of all time. It is absolutely impossible. And Big Blind Media have done a great job on the tutorial, the cards. And the picture. And, and the picture. The picture is great, the brainstorm picture. But they've done a great job on the tutorial. You've got Liam uh, Montier, who does the performance and the explanation. Uh, you've got a live performance to one spectator. And then you've got the, uh, the full tutorial. It's only about 13 minutes long. That's all it needs to be because it is almost self-working other than one move. Let's uh, have a look at a performance if you haven't seen it. And then after the performance, we'll talk about what we think. Okay, right, you're nine years old, so you've got to yeah. have a good imagination, right? Yeah, yeah. you got a good imagination? Yeah, obviously. Well, this is an imagination deck. Yeah. The idea of an imagination deck is that you can only see the cards if you've got a good imagination. You can only see the fronts and the backs if you can imagine it. Can, can, so can you, I mean, you're a kid, can yeah, you obviously. see the fronts and the backs of these cards? Yeah, obviously. You can, good. Yeah. Um, a lot of people that would be watching this, they wouldn't have a good imagination. But you, you're a kid, I know you've got a good imagination. Yeah. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to cut the deck into two piles, right? Yeah. Uh, this pile here and this pile here. And we're going, to, we're going to pretend that these are all the red cards. Yeah. And these are all the back cards. Okay. And you're going to use the reds. So I want you to go through and think of one of those red cards. Say it out. No, these are the reds. Uh, go through, point to one of the cards and say it out loud so everyone knows what it is. Uh, let's go for the Jack of Hearts. So was that that one there? Yeah, the Jack of Hearts. The Jack of Hearts. Okay, so yeah. you have picked out of these cards the Jack of Hearts. 
I'm going to go for my favourite black card, which is the Six of Spades. Okay? okay. So I'm going to go through here and I'm going to take out the uh, this one here, the Six of Spades. Now, you've got a good imagination. Can you tell this is the Six of Spades? Uh, yeah. You can? Good. Now, in reality, in reality, your card's blank, my card's blank. They're both blank, yeah, right? in reality. <laughs> but we're going to try and see if we can make imagination real. Yeah. I'm going to put my card, my Six of Spades into your packet and cut it in there, okay? Yeah. And I'm going to take your card and I'm going to cut it into this packet, right? Yeah. Now, everything has been imagination up until this point, but let's see if we can start doing some real magic. If I snap my fingers now, in here we have my six of spades. Whoa. Right there. <laughs> I can't even remember what was the name of your card. The jack of hearts. And now, over here, we have your jack of hearts and that is the power of imagination wow that's cool so that's the routine uh you love this don't you and yeah. this actually fooled your mom she was like is that roughing fluid and we were like no <laughs> because <laughs> it's <laughs> think you know everything oh, no, it's not roughing fluid um so so here's the thing this is very 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 clever yeah. from a routining point of view yeah. this is kind of genius um, and what's really nice is at all times they're seeing lots of blank surfaces of cards. You know, it really looks and feels like they've seen every single card. And the nice thing is um, at the end, all of the cards that are in front of them, th they're examinable. Yeah. That's really nice. Yeah. Not all of the cards are examinable, but the ones that have been spread in front of them are examinable and they can pick them up. And, and to be honest, I, you know, I've got experience doing this because I did this for years and uh, I know that even though not all of the cards can be examined, it's never an issue with this deck because there's so many really nice displays of cards where they see cards blank on both sides that, that there's no suspicion on this at all. It's why your mom, who knows so much about magic, watched the performance. Then she was like, is that roughing fluid? Because it really does feel like that you can, <laughs> you're looking at cards all the way through and that you're seeing the surfaces of absolutely everything. Like it's so fair when you actually think about it. Um, in terms of the actual trick itself, it's stunning. I mean, somebody has a free choice of a card. You choose a card, they choose a card. Have we even done the performance yet? Yeah, we did a performance, yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, you know, they you choose... Sure? Yeah, yeah. Have we? I'm, I'm pretty sure we have. I'm pretty sure we did. Okay. Yeah, pretty sure we did. If we didn't, we'll put the performance right here. But I think we did. Uh, <laughs> uh, anyway, uh, yeah, I think that, uh, I think that this is just incredible. I love this trick. I, like, I really do love this trick. Um, things to note. It's it's not, um, obviously, half the deck's not examinable, but from a routining point of view, they don't feel like they need to examine everything. Uh, also, it's not an instant reset. It's only going to take about 20 seconds to reset, but it's not something that you can really do in front of yeah. the audience. You might be able to, possibly, if you're kind of doing a gig where it's like very conversational and so on and so forth, and you're just putting cards away, but the best bet is to just yeah. put everything back in the box and then you should just you should walk away, reset it. It doesn't take long at all. Uh, it's a great trick to do um, in a uh, in a in a in a sorry, it's a great trick to do in a parlor situation. Yeah. Really good yeah. trick to do in a parlor yeah. situation. And what I used to do with it, by the way, how I used to do this is I used to actually do this after Greg Wilson's blank point blank, I think it's called. Uh, which is the ambitious card with the blank deck of cards. So I'd have a double blank deck of cards. I'd have them examined. I'd do Greg Wilson's routine where a signed card keeps coming to the top. You end up with a with an anniversary waltz style thing. I'm sure you guys have seen that. Uh, and then what I would do is on the offbeat, I'd switch for this deck and I'd say, well, let's try something else. As we've got blank cards here, let's do something else with these blank cards. And I'd then go into this routine. And because yeah. they've been handling the cards and they've been blank and then I go into this, it makes it even stronger. I would consider at the end of this doing another switch and switching to the quantum deck. <laughs> <laughs> and, then, and, then, yeah. and then you go into the quantum deck and you say, well, let's try one more thing. <laughs> yeah, you know, you don't, you've know, you got an entire well, act. Another thing, another thing, another thing. Yeah, you've got an entire act built around blank cards, which is really cool. Uh, you need a table uh, in order to do the trick. You can't do this without a table, but it doesn't need a special surface or anything like that. Any surface will work, but you do need a little bit of table space. Um, 
Outside of that, it's almost self-working. There's one move that you have to do, and the move is relatively easy, and it's done on the offbeat. Other than that, it's pretty much self-working. I love this trick. I think it's amazing. Yeah. Um, I genuinely love this so much. Uh, I'm yeah. so glad the Big Buy Media have bought it back. I'm going to do this 100%. It's definitely going back into my working repertoire. Yeah. I used to do it for years. I used to do this. It's definitely going right back in there. 100% from me. What about you? Definitely. 100%. Yeah. You're going to do this as well. Yeah, definitely. So cool. 100% from Ryland, 100% from me. Well done, Big Buy Media. Mark Leverage is a absolute legend. And now we're going to move on with another trick. Okay, so next up we have Danny's panel board. This is uh, cool. been bought out by Mia You Did Magic. Yes, absolutely. Oh, yeah, you can do that. Yeah, you can do that. Oh, there's lots of other handlings as well. Uh, yeah, right. So um, I, I was speaking to Mia about this at Magic Live and he was so excited to bring this out. This is this is going above and beyond when it comes to a trick. So there's a 90 minute documentary with this. The, the, the tutorial is about 90 minutes and he's got on there interviews with people um, like David Copperfield, who talks about this board. And this is one of the things that got David into magic. The panel board is kind of a bit of a legendary thing on the East Coast. Uh, and sort of the, the New York guys and them, people like that. Um, and a lot of people got into magic because of the panel board. It's not been around for a long time. And uh, Mia Yedid has bought it right back out uh, by having these produced. And he gives a big tip of the hat to Danny Trickless. Now, I haven't heard of Danny before, uh, but Danny was a pitch man in New York. And, ha and there's video footage of him doing this and uh, on, on the project and oh my gosh he does this so well and uh, he basically made his name doing panel boards at magic conventions and literally all over the place and he had the best yeah. of them for this and a lot of the people that are actually teaching the stuff on the uh, on the tutorial are students of Danny's and uh, Mia also goes through his routine which is incredible yeah. um, but I'm, I'm going to get Ryland to go through a basic handling of this now I will tell you this is actually a really easy trick to do yeah. but you can do it almost straight away but it requires practice it to really, make it really, look good really, really cool. Ryland loves this yeah. it's one of those fun tricks to practice it's a really yeah, fun it's trick it's the we actually use off. 5p. It's a 5p, yeah. Yeah, so you if can you, use any you small... lose the coin, I was going to say, well, I, I thought I lost the coin earlier, and I was like, where the hell is the coin? I, I found it eventually, I'm like... Well, the nice thing is, coin, you can borrow a 5p. It yeah. also works with a penny. In America, it will work with a, pe uh, with a, a cent or a dime. Um, uh, you know, any small coins. The original that came out with Danny was quarter size or 10 pence size, um, but th th this version is penny and uh, dime. Uh, but but Mia has actually said that he's going to be bringing out a deluxe version, which is quarter sized or 10 pen sized. The reason I bring up the fact that it's easy is although it's easy, it requires practice to make it look good. Yes. Now you're going to see a performance of Ryland doing it. I think you did it well, but yeah, it you've me, only been yeah, practicing it. Yeah, three times to do it. Yeah, three you've only you've only been practicing you've only been practicing it like two days now, haven't you? Two. Mm. Uh, mm. Yesterday. Two days. I learned it yesterday. Okay, yesterday. Yeah. So, yeah, so yesterday and today. So it's only been practicing it for two days. Uh, and obviously... As I said, we've only just got back from breakfast, so yes, it's from, in the morning. So, it is in the morning. So basically, so basically it's one day. Whatever. <laughs> for God's sake, Ryland, shut up. Uh, but, <laughs> uh, yeah, but um, you're going to see a performance of Ryland doing it. He does it well, but I think he's going to be able to do it a lot better with practice, yeah, yeah. is the point I'm trying yeah, to make. Yeah. So let's have a look at a performance of this, and then we'll talk about uh, everything. Yeah. Okay, so here I have a coin and a, like a, just a chess board, yeah? Chess board and a coin. So I'm take the chess board, and we'll take the coin like this. Watch. Three, two, one. What? And the coin has completely disappeared. That's insane. That is insane. Yeah. So watch, I'm going to make it try. I'm trying to make it come back. Watch. Three, two, one. How cool is that? That's awesome. Yeah, it's cool, isn't it? 
So that's a performance, and that was good. I really like that. That was great. And, and that's what it is. You borrow a five pence or a penny, you put it on the thing, and it vanishes. Now, there's lots of different ways on the tutorial of doing it. There's this really nice presentation where you hold a card up in front of it, and it just vanishes uh, yeah. a little bit like a stage illusion, but close up, and then you can bring it back. You can do it with a shot glass. So you can put a shot glass on top, and you can just have a coin appear inside the shot glass, and then you can have it vanish underneath the shot glass as well, which is really cool. Uh, Mia has got a really nice presentation with it where he apparently he throws the coin up into the air and as he throws it up into the air it vanishes that's really cool there's also an interview and a tutorial section with somebody who actually uses it in every restaurant gig he does and he's got a really nice idea of covering it up with an opaque sort of uh, um, I don't know what you call it sort of no opaque dish and uh, it vanishes underneath there and you show it both sides and he talks about invisible objects and things that are invisible and how can you see them Ghosts. and then he covers it, covers it up again and when he shakes it reappears and you hear it appear and then you see it appear so many really cool ways of doing ghosts. it um the yeah. ghost took it away the ghost took ryan is obsessed with ghosts at the moment because he's just rehearsing a uh, uh extreme there. hanky for it yeah over there <laughs> extreme hanky for his uh his stage show so uh yeah i really like this uh it's really good um it's the sort of thing that you could carry around i tell you where i tell you what i'm not i'm i'm not going to do this at a gig but I'll tell you where I, 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 I know I you will. I will. I'll tell you where I am going to use it. And this is what Mia suggests. And it's a really good idea. I'm going to have a couple of these. And I'm going to have them at my, I'm going to have one at my office here. I'm going to have one at my office at the, uh, at, at the office. And I'm going to use them as a coaster. So I'm going to put my coffee cup on it. And if somebody says to me, which happens all the time when they come in the office, do a trick. I'm just going to go, yeah, have you got a coin? I can borrow. you got like a small coin, like a penny. And I'm going to take this coaster off and I'm going to do it with the coaster. And just freak them out. <laughs> So it's just going to be hiding in plain sight and, and you know, maybe get one for the house as well. I, I like the idea of having like four of these. So you've got a coaster set. So when you have guests come around the house and you put your drinks out, uh, they've all got like coasters and they're all these little mini chessboard things. And then I say, anybody want to see a trick? Have you got a coin I can borrow? I tell you, somebody hand me a coaster. And it won't make any difference because all the coasters are gimmicks. I love the idea of doing that. I think I'm going to order like 10 of them for Mia and just like have them everywhere. So just be set up. But I don't think I'll do it at a gig. Not that it's You've not good. You've got like good. 5 million coasters. Oh, no, mm. could, no yeah. can you see it underneath the bar there? Yeah, no, I have. Yeah, yeah you got like literally 50,000. Yeah, because it's a bar. Of You're going to have coasters at a bar. That's why I bought loads of them. Uh, but I'm going to get... You've got to have a bar. Yeah, we've yeah. got our own bar. Of course we've got our own bar. It's a mess. It's not a You've mess. You've covered it already. It's not a mess. You've covered it already. I'm practising the cups and balls, that's all. You've covered it already. Shut up. Um, it I'm going to give this... Uh, 90% I think this is really good I'm going to I'm going to literally have it everywhere around the house but I'm not going to do it at a gig 90% from me what about you um 100 100% from mine. I want 50. Huh? I want 50. I want 50 of them. You want to decorate your wall with them. Um, yeah, good idea. Yeah, yeah. Mira yeah. will love you. 100% uh, from him, 90% from me. It's really good. It's really fun to play with as well. It's really fun to practice with. It's one of those Yeah, let me just take really... one of these off my wall. Watch. Well, yeah, I thought it's a <laughs> Yeah, let me get another one. Watch this. And just steal everyone's money. <laughs> just like, just like do it like, uh, how much is it? Just do it, um... 20 times and you have yeah, a bounce. Yeah, 20 times, yeah. <laughs> yeah, do it, just do it 20 times, everyone will come. Bye. <laughs> there you go. Get it. It's Still really fun. <laughs> Shut up. For God's sake, it's really fun. Uh, we're now going to finish off uh, with one last trick. Or you trip. can do it 100 times. Could, are you shutting up with now? With a pence. Are you shutting up? Yeah. Are we done? Good. Right, if a penny fits. Oh, right, we're going to we're gonna go into the next <laughs> We're going to go into the next Too trip. slim for a pound. Bye. Okay, so the final trick today, we have Oraculum by Alakazam Magic. And uh, uh, made by uh, made by Rob Bromley. It's, uh, Rob okay. Bromley made the actual yeah. cards and the actual board, but I believe that Harry Nardi um, came, yeah, up came up with the idea. Uh, this is Oraculum. So what it is is it's really more of a cabaret piece. Uh, you could do it's it. It's one of those tricks. Um, I, thought, um, I don't know what they're called. It's one of those tricks where you have like someone name a number and you're gonna do what you do. Like I've seen someone do like a hug. And then they pick the hug and all the other. Yeah, I do that. Death. Hug kill. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, hug kill. Yeah. Kill, kill. It's a little bit her, like hug, uh, like uh, he's talking about. Yeah, with the dice. Tom Stone. That's Tom Stone trick. Yeah. Oh. Oh. Yeah, it's Tom Stone. Tom Stone trick. Uh, it's called a dice of men. Uh, it's uh, got marketed by Vanishing Ink. And I remember Tom doing it for the first time at Ron's Day many, many years somewhere, ago. Some, somewhere on the part mess of DVDs over there. Hmm. 
There's two two Transform DVDs. Yeah, I've got quite a few of them. Yeah. In that mess over there. It's not a mess. We've we put them all up. In, in that order. mess over there. Yeah. There's two Tom Stone. Okay. Can we can we get on with this? Yeah. So in uh, a mess. What we have it's here. In a mess. Please please Very please just stop. <laughs> please just stop. So what we have here is we have a see through board. It's got six numbers on it. One two three four five six. And the idea is that you give somebody a free choice of any number, and uh, basically you're forcing something onto them. Yeah. Now, Harry actually used this uh, in his audition, along with the rest of 4MG, at uh, Britain's Got Talent in the auditions. And uh, he had a really nice presentation for it. I won't actually uh, um, tip that to you now. Go look at 4MG's I audition, really cool. um, which is really cool. I think I want to do that. I wanna do well, that. the thing that you need to understand when you actually buy this is you have to be aware of what you want to set it up as because you get six cards which are gimmicked cards and you have to write on them whatever presentation that you want and when you've written on them and you've put that presentation down you can't then change them you those cards are set up well not another one how like i said sell we're replacement cards oh yeah we're getting we're getting some replacement cards as well yeah now rylan's because, because we're gonna do what for md did yeah now the but with ruby schemes Okay, that's fair enough. Now, Ryland uh, has decided he wants to do this in his cabaret show as a new, he's putting a new show together. He wants this to be the opening in his cabaret <laughs> yeah, show. I do. I actually do. Uh, it packs, I actually do. I know you do. It packs small With that and it and plays that. very, very big. So we're just scripting it at the moment. I'll give you a sneak peek. This is a rough idea. This isn't the finished thing. Uh, but this is an idea of, of how Ryland wants to use it, which is uh, kind of very similar to what uh, Harry suggests on the actual project. The only difference is that uh, how Ryland actually ends it. So let's have a look at the performance of this so you can see exactly how we plan on using this. Now, before we start this trick, I'm just going to show you that I have a little purse. Now, that purse has got something in. Now, as well as the purse, I also have a little board here. It's got uh, six numbers on. One, two, three, four, five, six. Now, on each side of the board, there's a card on uh, left and right. Now, on behind it each card there is a prize each one has a very good prize now mom i'd like you to name one of these uh, numbers and whatever you choose that's the prize you get four so you want four you want uh this one yeah so you want this one you want four yeah so you want four now well before we look at this i'd like to see what we've got on the others we have a ten thousand no yeah, ten thousand pound cash prize, twenty five thousand cash prize. We have a fifty thousand. We have a hundred thousand, and we have a hundred and fifty thousand. So we've got these cash prizes, but shall we look at the one that you actually chose? Yes. You actually chose Is a tic tac. What? You chose a tic tac. <laughs> a tic tac. Yeah. Is that code for a million pounds? No, it's code for what's in the wallet. Which is a tic tac. Oh my god. And that tic -tac. is what you get. You get yeah, a tic tac. At least you can have a clean breath. <laughs> okay, so I think that makes a really great opener. Yeah. Like, I think walking out on stage and saying, hey guys, uh, before I start the show, I'd like to give somebody a prize. I'd like, I'd like somebody to have a prize, and this is my prize board, and then going into it. And I love the idea. Yeah, you get a little easel. Yeah, and get I love the easel. idea of having the little purse that's put down at the beginning. And so that when they pick Tic Tac, you've actually predicted the Tic Tac. And then you go, here you go, here's the Tic Tac. I think that's just really cool. Um, because you've got you've got that kind of element of, like you say, hug kill, where they could... And it also <laughs> reminds me a little bit yeah, of... Yeah, you could actually um, do that, though. Yeah, you, you could. could. Put hug kill. You could. It also reminds me a little bit of uh, Stephen Bagatsby's I Hate Kids, which is another nice presentation. <laughs> I don't hate kids, Stephen Bagatsby does. <laughs> Uh, which is where you kind of say, look, hey, I'm going to give you a chance to uh, um, uh, to win some money, but you're definitely going to lose. I think if you did it in an I hate kids style, you'd have like one pound on the on the force card. So what you'd have is, you'd, you know, the kid would win a pound and you give him a pound and then you turn around and you go, look what you could have won, um, <laughs> which would be a really fun way of doing Sneaky. it as well. But, yeah. uh, you know, it's self-working, isn't it? It's yeah. just completely self-working. All you need to do, if you're going to do it in a cabaret show, all you need to do is just put that in the case along with uh, the cards that you put in there. 
and the little, and the little purse with the tic tac <laughs> with you, if you want that. Well, and then you're good to go. No. You could have um, you could have a bottle of beer for the adults. No, you could have. I also quite like uh, doing it in a kids show. I think it'd work quite well in a kids show. Maybe do something like have uh, like let's say because a lot of the time in kids shows you get booked and they go, oh, can you theme the show to a particular theme? So let's say they were theming, they wanted it themed to Paw Patrol, for example. Well, how you can do that? Well, what you could do is you could have the six characters, Rocky, Rubble, Chase, Marshall, Sky, and whoever the other one is. There's six, isn't there? Zuma? Zuma, that's it. Yeah. So you have the six there, and you say... I don't know, I haven't watched it, and I just... <laughs> and you bring it out like that, and you say, look, I've got the six pups from Paw Patrol. I've also got a, uh, a, a bag here. Uh, you're going to pick one of the pups, it's completely random, and I think I've predicted which pup that you'd name. And then you literally just have them, you force the pup, you know, which, whichever pup that you want. I would you're... make... Um, My favourite's Rubble. I would, I, what I would force, is, if I do this with uh, Paw Patrol, I would force... Um, oh, Zuma. Yeah. And um, I'll do the trick where you have the... Um, I'll literally um, do the trick where you make the water float. And I'll do it on one of the parents and it just gets soaked. <laughs> and I'm doing it because I have a bottle of water, but the thing, weird thing is this bottle is special. If I turn it upside down, like, I'll get one of the parents up, just sit there, boom! Well, I like the water. idea of doing less like that and more like <laughs> having a change bag that's empty. And then when you snap your fingers, they, they pick Chase, for example, and you that's open up boring. and you take Chase out that's and you boring. give it to the birthday kid. That's boring. Yeah, only because you're not six or six years old and love it. Um, no, not getting a parent gets soaked! Point is, point is. Someone that would like to get wet, can you please show me up on stage? <laughs> One of the parents should stand up and say, me. Point okay, is. Okay, come over, sit down, watch the water. Bam. <laughs> Soak. The point is, Soak. if you do stage work, if you do parlour, if you do cabaret, this is a fantastic way to actually have a really high impact opening to your show. I love this. Um, I'm going to give this uh, 100%. Uh, it's Alakazam. Yeah, uh, it's very, of course, it's, it's very high quality. It's Nine. very well made. Yeah, it's it's straight for your camera. Uh, one hundred twenty percent from Ryland, one hundred percent from me. It's really good. You can get them exclusively from Alakazam Magic. Yep. Let's wrap this whole thing up. Yeah, and that's another review show in the back, and that's another review show in the back, and that's another review show in the back. It is another review show in the back. Sorry, I was out. It is another review show in the back. Guys, once again, thank you for joining us right here on Magic TV. You want to see more videos like this? Like the My video, subscribe to the channel. The oh, dear. I'm down. <laughs> Don't worry, you just stay there. Um, I'll, be, I'll be back again uh, tomorrow with another video. Me and Ryan will be back again next Wednesday, yep. won't we? Yeah. Uh, with another review show. And uh, two things. If you haven't already gone and joined The Netrix, please do so. www.thenetrix.com. <laughs> it's my online streaming platform for magicians. Ryan spends most of his time on there. And also, if you... If you haven't already followed Ryan on YouTube and Instagram, please do so. You're on almost 13,000 Instagram followers now. Yeah. Yeah, you never slow down. Uh, and if you want to see a sneak peek of some of the stuff that's going in the review show, go check out the uh, Ryan's Instagram because we work a week ahead on the review yeah. show. So after we film a review show, he films a lot of this stuff for his Instagram. So it goes out on his Instagram before it goes out on the, uh, the review show. But we'll be back again next week. Thanks very much for watching. I'm Craig. I'm Shrunken Island. We'll see you again. Bye, everyone. Bye-bye.